the esteemed guest, he is the guest of honor and uh, an amazing person. His Excellency Zulfikar, uh, he is the CEO of the Royal Office of uh, His Excellency Sheikh Tanun. And uh, he is involved in um, uh, different uh, businesses. He, he do the strategic management, he do the, um, and he is a defense advisor. You know, that's the amazing part. Uh, I remain in uh, AmCham for some time with my friends, and uh, we have access to three weapon selling companies. You know. So it's lovely to hear that you are uh, working on uh, defense. So, so I would like to invite His Excellency on the stage to share his thoughts about landscape in Pakistan. Please welcome him on stage with a big round of applause. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who just walked in, who did not hear great words about me, I really like to hear them. Uh, thank you, Dr. Musa, for a very elaborate introduction. I don't know if I'm worth it, but uh, um, what we do is a quick introduction because I'm often blamed by my office for not pitching ourselves. So I'll take a minute to introduce ourselves. Uh, we are the office of uh, uh, Sheikh Tahanun bin Saeed Al Nahyan, and I don't like to put His Excellency or His Highness to our names because titles for title-minded people. Um, I will get rid of mine too soon, trust me. Um, what we do is we are a typical uh, whole family office which is focused on um, uh, two things. One is active partnership, the other is strategic partnership. Um, Yes, of course, we make our investments globally, and we also make investments uh, domestically in the UAE. Uh, today's topic being uh, invest in Pakistan, when I was approached for uh, uh, sharing my perspective, and uh, I happily oblige for doing this because um, uh, Pakistan is an important country in the region, and uh, not just in the region, but also across the globe. Uh, given its strategic location and uh, its uh, dynamics in itself, it's uh, very important that uh, the focus is indeed on uh, uh, developing Pakistan. Um, I was thinking about why you guys calling it uh, Naya Pakistan or New Pakistan, for that matter. Uh, what's the need for calling it uh, a New Pakistan? Have you even thought of it? Like why you want to call it a New Pakistan? Um, definitely there is something that has gone wrong in the old ones. And it's high time that uh, the Pakistani diaspora realizes that. And um, it's, it's all about going back to basics. And uh, don't mind me being a little uh, harsh about a few facts. And I will, of course, highlight also the great parts of it, which is what we are looking at as an uh, office in itself. So most important and the most basic point I want to highlight today is um, Pakistan needs to go back to basics. Basics means uh, creating a wonderful uh, scenario for investment for its investors who are are outside, who are looking from the fence, who are wanting to look at opportunities, who wants to uh, go and explore opportunities. Um, I don't know if um, there is an agency which kind of uh, leads uh, the promotion. Um, I would ideally like to see a Pakistan Investment Promotion Council, something like that, to be constituted. Or if it already exists, I would like to be in touch with them and perhaps help them create a five-year plan or a 10-year plan or a 20-year plan, you know, because that's what you need. You need a short-term strategies and you need a long-term strategies. Um, I want to highlight certain facts. Um, um, today, coming from uh, the perspective of UAE, UAE has always seen Pakistan as one of the biggest ally in the region. Uh, it's one of the biggest trading partners as well. Um, with the coming of uh, Prime Minister, His Excellency, Mr. Imran Khan, I'm myself very excited personally because A, I've always been his fan and um, I've seen him play cricket and I know that the man believes in uh, being fair. His game was always about being fair and I know that that legacy of his cricketing career continues in his political career and uh, so far he has given all the signs of being a very, very uh, genuine f to his cause and um, he hasn't betrayed his cause as a politician coming from what he promised and what he's trying to do now. And that's a very welcome sign for uh, leaders across the world. Uh, Pakistan has an important role to play right now with uh, Prime President Donald Trump trying to trying his best to exit uh, uh, Afghanistan and the war zone. Um, 
I think Pakistan has to take the lead from here on, and at least that's what uh, the American establishment expects from Pakistan to take a lead on that front. And that will be a deciding factor for uh, Pakistan as to how it treats and handles this current uh, situation going forward, because um, there are several factions across Taliban, and, um, and uh, that is something which Pakistan, being a neighbor or being on the right across the border, understands is much better than a lot of people. And uh, I think the, the role of Pakistan now politically in geopolitical scenario becomes much more important. And uh, it's, it's a deciding factor for Pakistan now how it handles this um, uh, Taliban situation, which uh, makes it uh, a blue-eyed boy of the US, and uh, we all intend to be one, right? So it, it, it's, it is a deciding factor for attracting a lot of capital and a lot of investment into Pakistan. That, that situation handling is very important. Secondly, um, again, on the eastern side of Pakistan, there is uh, some kind of a uh, situation in regards to the, the Kashmir situation, which I hope is diffused very soon, and um, that um, you know it doesn't al let Pakistan slip into any kind of um, further um, political and um, militarized issues. I want uh, the heads to understand the importance of peace and the importance of uh, self-development, because nothing is better than uh, self-development. Um, a lot of people ask me to speak at um, investment uh, a promotion in their country, and uh, the first thing they say is, uh, we want to attract industry, we want to attract investment, and uh, we want people to start doing um, or coming into our country and start their industry. I said, that's not the right approach. You're not, again, addressing the most basic part of it. The most basic part of it is, are you telling people to come in first, research and develop in your country? Because if you just say come and manufacture, perhaps those guys will just simply bring their assembly processes from some other country. Um, that's what happened with one of the countries. Um, the promoters were just bringing in goods manufactured in um, one of the country which is into the trade war right now with the US. And um, so now what they do is they just bring uh, broken up parts and uh, they just uh, assemble those products. But still, it is made not in that country, but made in so-called China. So you, in the long run, you, you're ruining your own industry because what you're bringing is uh, absolute crap out of that country and you're putting it a stamp of um, your country and you're indirectly ruining your own potential to develop yourself as a product uh, dominated or a production dominated or a manufacturing hub. Um, I believe, um, what Pakistan should do is attract uh, reverse brain drain, which is a very fancy term to s per se to speak. But in my career, I mean, I've studied uh, in Switzerland, in the UK, in the US, and I worked in these geographies worldwide. I have met uh, like Pakistanis who each of them are like 20 to 30 billion dollars worth, you know. And when I see Pakistan as a country getting aid of three to four billion dollar, I mean, I, I think like what's happening, I mean, these guys could just uh, sweat it out in one second, you know, these NRI, NRPs, what you call them, non-resident Pakistanis. I mean, some of these guys can just sweat uh, three, four billion dollars just like that. And uh, Pakistan as a country getting a bailout package of three to four billion dollars, kind of out of my understanding. So something is going wrong. You're not able to attract uh, these uh, wealthy, super wealthy Pakistanis back into Pakistan, and that is something should be the big, biggest focus. You don't need any outsider to invest with you, trust me. You need just the same Pakistanis who left you 10, 20, 30 years ago. You just need to focus on creating an amazing um, investment scenario and then a great and a robust and a very transparent uh, investment scenarios and a protection of their investment. Give them um, a, a repatriation, give them a clarity on the transactions. Give them a uh, robust, uh, uh, no red tapism anymore, no bureaucracy anymore. And I think Prime Minister Pakistan is working on this direction. Uh, so from UAE, we are definitely looking at uh, uh, sectors, especially in uh, education, because I feel that's the crux of uh, all uh, development that you envisage. Um, education and creating an efficient workforce is uh, the buzzword. I have seen some of the great inventions and innovations in the IT sector coming out of Pakistan and out of Pakistani corporations worldwide. So I would write, like Pakistan to focus on innovation and focus on technology. Um, they have been amazing with agriculture and uh, I think the government of Pakistan needs to again, like I said, go back to basics and focus on agriculture. And uh, agriculture coupled with technology and innovation will lead 
to creating uh, intensive farming projects will lead to creating uh, much more better breeds and variety of uh, farm products as well as uh, um, the dairy industry and the meat industry is very big and uh, we would like to work with them. Uh, on the side of um, banking and finance, I think uh, government of Pakistan should liberalize its uh, uh, the investment scenarios as well as the banking policy so that more and more foreign direct investment can come in in a much more transparent way. I mean, it's there, the policy is there definitely, but I'd like to see more, uh, you know, openness and uh, willingness and seriousness to come in. Um, the current trade with UAE stands uh, at a meager uh, $6 billion roughly. And um, I think uh, the bailout package, which uh, the cash package that uh, UAE announced has kind of helped the economy of Pakistan. Uh, and uh, I want to see more uh, honest effort on the side of um, the Pakistani government so that uh, not just UAE, but uh, many more foreign direct investments uh, come into the nation. Um, I also believe that um, uh, the most important aspect today is um, across the world what is happening, uh, the rise of rightist activism that is happening. I want Pakistan to save, safeguard itself against it. Uh, the role of um, religion and politics should be in its own place, but the danger thing happens when they both collide with each other, you know. So I want religion to remain in its place and politics to continue to do its politics and uh, remain true to its uh, mission, which is uh, nothing but national development. And I think this will definitely help uh, create a much better image because um, I have been involved with uh, several investment promotion of various countries worldwide. And the first thing as a professional, what we do is uh, we focus on uh, changing an image, image building and creating a new image is most important. Perhaps that's the reason why Dr. Musa chose uh, Naya Pakistan, the term. And um, I think the term Naya Pakistan should say that the language that it wants to promote is only the language of coding and no other languages. You know, and this I borrowed from uh, one of the very dynamic lady I met at World Economic Forum. She was from Saudi Arabia. And I went into the Saudi pavilion and um, I'm expecting someone who's going to be a very conservative person, someone who's going to be, um, you know, not to the level that I would expect uh, someone from a Western world. But that lady zapped me with uh, her attitude and her approach and her friendliness towards uh, um, uh, attracting great minds. And the first thing she said was uh, uh, something in Arabic, which I said, Madam, I'm not very comfortable speaking Arabic. Uh, so she said, doesn't matter. Sooner or later, we'll have coding as our language. So that, for, that one statement changed my mindset about the Saudi Arabia and Saudi women especially, you know. It, I went back and I told probably 10,000 of them in my entire last one year that, you know what, I think this is not what you think about Saudi Arabia. It's very different. You know, the, the, the progression and the mindset is totally different. I mean, you know, it's not what you read in the newspapers. And of course, I blame the media and the Western world, which has been uh, always been um, not so very friendly to Arab world. And I've witnessed in the last 10-15 uh, years of my career. And I can rightly understand so because they don't want their wealth to dr get drained as well. So, But I, when I first came myself here into the UAE and I saw a complete different world. I mean, I mean, look at me. I was exposed uh, to all the CNNs of the world and Fox News of the world who only told me not so very friendly and not so very good things about, uh, uh, about UAE. And when I came here for the first time in 2006, I already felt I'll miss the bus long back. And luckily, I mean, I went in straight in the lap of uh, really powerful people and was able to carve a niche for myself. But um, it's just the media which plays a very important role. And uh, what I'm trying to emphasize is the image building and the media management, which is uh, very critical. And that, that just doesn't come with uh, some paid articles and some stuff like here and there. But it comes with a very constant and a very efficient effort to build an image of a country. I think that will certainly should start from the highest uh, leadership with uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan and all the way down to each and every Pakistani of uh, Indian uh, or Pakistani origin that we see here today. Uh, this, this whole coordination is very important, I believe. Uh, UAE as a country um, has always been a supporter and Pakistan as a country always have been a supporter of um, UAE in uh, the process of defense and aerospace and uh, various other industries. I want this relationship to grow and um, at the Royal Office, we are very keen to look at and explore more investment opportunities. 
and i'm i'm very confident that uh, uh, at the end of the day today i will make some new friends and some new perspectives about uh, investment opportunities and let's see how we can uh, make those uh, scenarios happen i've brought along with me a couple of my friends here uh, mr riaz mohammed who is a danish uh, person of uh, pakistani origin and he's been a big fan of pakistan and uh, he tells me all great stories of his uh, uh, childhood going to pakistan and having a great time and uh, uh, having those juicy mangoes i wanted to go back again and uh, probably make a lot of investments back there and he's with his um, danish brother dennis jensen who again is one of the leading investors in denmark and um, in the real estate sphere and i'm sure riaz and his team will be able to guide him more to look at uh, pakistan in terms of looking at investment opportunities so i'm very much here i wish to meet uh, more and more people and get educated um, i don't want to bore you anymore because um, it takes a long 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 time to complete such events so dr musa thank you again for this lovely opportunity khulud and um, i look forward to interacting with each one of you and uh, i'm available for healthy and a wonderful conversation about invest in pakistan and please do that because your country needs you the most at this juncture and i'm sure you will do that the you'll answer the call of your country thank you very much his excellency i want to, uh, i want you to be there yeah i want to introduce you with some people who really work hard to build sure. this naya pakistan sure sure and they want to share some vision because uh, the, uh, you are the most important uh, in all our crowd and we want to convince you that pakistan is the best place to invest sure. good morning ladies and gentlemen i'm really honored to be part of such a steam uh, event firstly i'll introduce myself my name is irfan sarawan i am uh, representing pakistan tehreek insaf which is the uh, imran khan's party here in uae and uh, i was uh, listening to your uh, speech and uh, i must say I must use a, a very simple phrase that I can't agree with you more. Each and every word you said very passionately about uh, the core issues we have been facing, and along with that is the solution. I just wanted to emphasize uh, a small point here that uh, we are keen to invest more um, in our country, but as long as um, we have we have that um, intention to do so uh, why don't we think of uh, uh, investing in people uh, as we all are very well aware that human development is the most difficult aspect uh, the thing which has been always uh, badly utilized or misused i must say is uh, the religion and the politics so let us inspire people like you who can come forward and take uh, um, ownership of these two areas thank you very much for everyone yeah i mean uh, uh, thank you very no, much no i want to answer you saying that uh, you also thank you first of all for acknowledging uh, what i said and uh, well i had a fantastic speech prepared by my team but you know i'm in uh, staying in dubai and uh, originally coming out of india and studying abroad across the world i think i have a very straight understanding of pakistan and pakistani affairs so i thought i will not use any speech and i'll straight away address the core of the issue which i feel is always been the issue and trust me nobody is happy seeing um, uh anything wrong that happens in any part of the world nobody is happy you know nobody who's a sensible person of course is never happy and i believe that um, the amount of uh, effort that is required to build a strong uh, supply of uh, skilled math labor force especially for the newer technologies i mean some of the old world uh, technologies and some of the great uh, products of the past have always come from uh, pakistan and uh, we and when we talked about clothes when we talked about textiles when we talked about uh, great uh, rice quality of rice always came from pakistan but we want to go above above that and uh, i know some of the friends in uh, us and canada 
who are uh, multi-billionaires of Pakistani origin and the technologies that they've created is unmatched even today. I mean, even NASA uses some of their uh, algorithms and some of their protocols that they've created. And when I talk to them, what are you doing to go back? He said, man, you know, the political system. So if that is addressed, and uh, if they're attracted in the right way, I'm sure, you know, they will be able to. And I want Pakistan to only focus on uh, education, higher education, and research and development. Don't make a mistake of um, attracting people only to come and manufacture, 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 because they're foreigners at the end of the day. What you need is to enhance and increase your GDP. And that can only happen if you have a product. GDP means gross domestic product. And product will only come when you have a home in-house innovation. And innovation will only come from impetus that you provide to R&D. So that's my message. Thank you very much. So Pakistan is a great country that we are talking about. And as I give you a reference that Donald Trump, when uh, His Excellency Imran Khan went. So Pakistan has a federal government and there are provincial governments as well. So I uh, requested the Pakistan Tariq and Saf, the ruling party spokesperson to talk about. I would like to request them to say something about Sindh and Karachi so you can be enlightened about what opportunities we have there. Ji, Salaam Alaikum. Kaun Salaam. Main kyunke Naya Pakistan is liye Urdu mein baat karta hoon ke Sindh government aur Pakistan mein samajta hoon ke wahaan par jitni abhi opportunity hain sab ko wahaan par jana chahiye aur invest karna chahiye اور پورے پاکستان کے اندر ایک ایسا ہے بلک کہ جہاں پر میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ پوری دنیا کے جو وسائل ہیں وہ اگر لگائے جائیں تو کم ہیں تو اس لیے جتنے بھی ورلڈ وائز جتنے سپیشلی اوورسیز پاکستانی ہیں یا دوسرے لوگ ہیں ان کو چاہیے کہ پاکستان میں جائیں اور پاکستان میں انویسٹ کریں اور پاکستان ایک بڑے اچھا ملک ہے اور میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ ایک ایٹمی طاقت ہے تو اس لیے بڑی سکیور انویسٹمنٹ وہاں پر ہوگی تینک یو سنس یور فرم کراچی سر کراچی is a financial capital of Pakistan maybe hundred years ago my family also had great businesses in Karachi and some of my family still even today has a lot of business in Karachi what I will request is that please focus on microfinance because nobody is kind of uh, giving it a thought. Uh, the Muhammad Yunus model, what I call it, reaching to the last man in the line. And um, I believe there are so many, I see a lot of videos on, um, on uh, social media where I see that there are a lot of these small innovators who have great ideas, but there is no one to kind of, uh, there is no incubator to accelerator um, model that is happening. So perhaps, that's something which we would like to, you know, engage with you directly on uh, from UAE, you know, that we will want to create an incubator right in the heart of Pakistan and have a coordination with the UAE office where we can focus on um, looking at these young entrepreneurs and uh, these great uh, ideas, you know, that can be scaled up and can be given a global platform. It doesn't take much. It's just a small investment. but. If proven to be the right product, it can always have a great scalability. And we are already doing it. It's not that we're just thinking about it. But uh, we can also create a, I will ask my team to focus on that in creating a, a special um, uh, desk where we can only focus on uh, meeting these uh, entrepreneurs out of uh, Pakistan, focusing on fintech, focusing on uh, uh, biotech, and uh, various other technologies that can come out of. Thank you so much.